Let's talk about the types of weathering and soil. So on Earth, pure rocks cannot support vegetation. So this is the picture of Hawaii right here. And on the left is a fresh lava flow. On that fresh lava flow is no plants or vegetation. Before plants or vegetation can grow, the rocks must be broken down to make soil. The rocks have to be weathered. So we'll start with physical weathering. Physical weathering means breaking rocks without using chemicals. So physical forces act on the rocks to break them into smaller fragments. The first type of physical weathering pictured here is ice. Water will get into the cracks of a rock. When it freezes, the ice expands because it takes up more volume than the original water did. And that expansion can push further cracks or make the cracks bigger into the rock. Now it's often called ice wedging as well. Water can also not only cause ice wedging, but waves or other streams or things can slam rocks into other rocks, breaking them slightly. That's more of an erosion, but it also weathers as well. Now for wind, wind can pick up other bits of rocks and actually slam them into other rocks. So you may have heard of a sandstorm before. Uh, sand can only be picked up so far by wind. And when it falls back down, it falls back down, hitting rocks, breaking them ever so slightly. Uh, plant roots can also break rocks via enlarging the cracks. So plant roots are physical weathering as well. They can expand cracks as the roots grow. They make the cra cracks bigger. There's also uh, physical weathering by, by salt. So salt can get into cracks and as the crystals grow, they can expand those cracks as well, similar to plant roots. Now glaciers and gravity can also cause physical weathering. We'll start with gravity. So as rocks fall down off mountains or hills and fall into other rocks, they can break them along the way. Glaciers can do the same thing, but uh, as a glacier comes down a valley, as pictured here, it picks up rocks along the way. And as that glacier scratches along the sides, it can actually scratch and break rocks as it moves. Now, the movement part is called erosion, but for now, we're just focusing on the breaking part, which is the physical weathering. So as it breaks the rocks along the way, it weathers them and picks them up as well and incorporates them in the glacier, allowing it to break even more rocks. Because normally ice would not be able to scratch rocks, but ice embedded with other rocks can definitely scratch rocks. Now, that was physical weathering. Let's talk about chemical weathering. So for chemical weathering, chemical weathering is where chemicals or water itself break down rocks. And it actually changes the structure of the rock itself, whereas physical weathering only changes the size or the shape of the rocks. Chemical weathering actually changes the rocks. So the first type is hydration. And hydration is where water gets into the minerals within the rocks and actually changes those minerals into new types of minerals. This often occurs with feldspars, and since there's a lot of feldspars on Earth, hydration is one of the main types of chemical weathering. Now, one thing I should mention is that higher temperatures actually lead to faster chemical weathering because the chemical reactions that take place with chemical weathering, uh, they, have, they run at a faster rate when the temperatures are higher. So you're likely to find more chemical weathering in some place like Florida than you would in a place like Antarctica just because the chemical reactions happen faster. Now, the second type of chemical weathering, you often see it called carbonation or hydrolysis, and that's where acidic water breaks rocks down. Now, acidic water is actually very common because rain on Earth, when it runs in the carbon dioxide, which we have in our atmosphere, it turns in slightly acidic rain. Not very much, but slightly acidic. Uh, it's often called carbonic acid. Now, over long periods of time, hundreds, thousands of years, that slightly acidic water can eat into limestone or marble and cause caves or even sinkholes. So this is very common where you have places on Earth where you have lots of limestone, a uh, place on Earth where you have lots of water, like Florida would be an example that has both, and also higher temperatures. It runs true for this type of chemical weathering as well. The higher the temperature, the faster that acid can work on the rocks. Now, a third type of chemical weathering is oxygen. You see it called oxygenation. Now, this does not require water. Um, and now, rust can still happen with water, but it can actually happen with just the oxygen. And it's where oxygen attacks the iron molecules or the iron-bearing um, minerals inside of a rock. 
So it could turn uh, magnetite into hematite or goethite. Uh, it can turn bare iron that humans have made into rust. Um, and this often occurs where it's warm, but doesn't have a bunch of water. Now, both, most places on Earth have a mixture of physical and chemical weathering. It's not, you're not going to find a place that only has chemical weathering because, you know, physical weathering is still a thing as well. But uh, the more water you have, the more chemical weathering you're likely to have. The less water, the more physical weathering. Now, no matter what type of water you have, there is oxygen on Earth, so you're always going to have oxygenation. But keep in mind, this is a much, much slower process than the other two types of chemical weathering we just saw with hydrolysis or carbonation.